Hi, this is Vinny Santana, triathlon coach at Iron Guides. I'm going to do a video analysis of Jan Frodeno's new world record for the Ironman distance triathlon. It was only a two-man race, both Jan Frodeno and Lionel Sanders. And in this video, I'm going to do an analysis on the equipment that they use, the technique, the race strategy, and why you actually may be able to learn more from Lionel Sanders, who actually got beaten by Jan Frodeno, than from Jan Frodeno himself. And what can you learn as an age grouper? How can you improve your performance based on the things that you're going to learn on this video? So to start with, you're going to see there's only two athletes racing. So I don't know if it's fair that we can say a world record race there is only going to be two athletes because it, it does interfere with the race results uh, of course that you no know, more athletes means like a different dynamic but also like the other athletes they didn't have the, t the ch opportunity to, to race this course which was much faster it was made for the for the world record uh, before this guy start I just want to discuss a little bit about the background of both athletes so Ian Ferdinand he was the Olympic champion in 2008, so he has, as of you know, the day of this, this video, uh, 13 years off as, as the Olympic champion. And since then, he's won multiple Ironman titles, world titles, 7.3 world titles. Whereas Lionel Sanders, he only started in this sport in 2011. So that's why you got to be careful for who you're going to copy from. You know, someone who's been doing this for the whole life versus someone who has like limited uh, time to develop the background. That said, in the swim, you're going to see the differences um, in terms of technique, of how these athletes are positioning their heads. That's something that any age grouper, they can, they can uh, improve. Pay attention on how Lionel Sanders, this is Ian Frodeno leading, Lionel Sanders getting dropped the, at the back there. So Lionel Sanders, when he swims, the top of his head, it's always exposed. As you can see, the top of his swim cap, he never really pushes his head under the water, so that affects um, the whole body position. And you're going to see that, meanwhile, Ian Frodeno, he fully disappears of his head unless he's uh, breathing, right? So you can't really see like his head or like the top of his swim cap. So he really presses his head and his chest into the water. Uh, going to transition, also this is something that both backgrounds are very different. Frodeno, Coming from the ITU background, he developed that extremely fast transition skill. So as you can see here, his, his bike shoes are already placed with this elastic band in appropriate position to make it much easier and faster to, um, to start riding. And he does like the fly mount, very smooth transition. Whereas Lionel Sanders is gonna take just way longer. There you go, super quick. So Lionel Sanders, meanwhile, you can see his bike shoes aren't the same way. They're, he's going to be fiddling with, with the mounts as well. You know, fiddling with the shoes, can't really find the, the right position from the first go. And then off he goes. Um, I'll, I'm going to pause here. This is another very unique situation about high performance, um, long distance athletes. So we have 49 minutes of racing here. Lionel Sanders was four minutes back. So... Ian Frodeno has been riding for four minutes now, and as you can see, he hasn't put his um, feet into his shoe yet, both sides. So, why that is? Not necessarily, not necessarily this race, but in a race with other athletes, it's very normal. Those guys, they ride very, very hard until they connect to the pack that they want to be riding with. So until then, they won't stop to put the shoes on because you know, even though it only takes like a second or two, it's something that's distracting them to make that front pack. So it's probably something that Ian Ferdinand does all the time. So you would only do this when you're like fully in your cruise speed, you're comfortable, you're in the pack, and then like, okay, now I can start to settle, I can put my shoes, um, my feet inside my shoe. So here, somewhere halfway into the race, and you can see, yeah, he's fully um, kitted. And I just want to discuss a little bit about the equipment that he's riding and explain like a few things. First of all, like everything that you can see here is optimized to be more aerodynamic. From, from the water bottle, this is uh, the Elite Chrono water bottle, to the helmet with the visor, the sleeved tri-suit. He's also, um, his Canyon bike, 
there is this like water uh, bladder inside the frame so you can refill on the go and also for this race the aid station was actually uh, this motorbike came next to them and, and offered them um, water so they can refill these guys they can refill within that blader inside the frame so that's possible and uh, something that you can't really see from this side but that's the most important in terms of, of equipment so they're both riding like a single um, chain ring in the front so if you're watching this it's very likely that you have two so they only have one however in the back it's a 12 speed uh, bike and then the smallest cog is only 10 teeth which which is 10 percent smaller than the 11 teeth that you if you're watching this it's probably what you you're riding so try not to make this too confusing the fact that they're riding a 10 in the back means that in the front is 10 percent bigger so Jan Ferdinand is riding a 52 in the front but to make it easy for you to compare is if as if he was riding 57 and Lionel Sanders he's riding a 54 but also because he's riding a 10 teeth um, cog in the back it, it compares as if he was riding a 59 so I thought that would be something um, interesting they're all riding um, big chain rings in terms of cadence Jan Ferdinand pushes like a bit of a higher cadence once again I prefer Lionel Sanders style you can see pretty much the same set, set of equipment you know that uh, the one difference that you can see here is the water bottles, but I believe this is uh, a sponsorship uh, agreement that they have, like it's probably like in the contract because he's sponsored by Gatorade, so he must ride with the with the Gatorade bottles. And the next thing that we want to compare um, it's the bike fit of both athletes, as you can see from this screen. Ian Ferdino is very narrow. The the front view is the most important because that's. The, that's what the wind sees, that's the, the front drag. Pay attention how his knees are very close to the top tube compared to Lionel Sanders. Let me just go back a little bit. And his hands are both um, together, so he's very thin. Where Lionel Sanders, his knees are sticking out. The hands are not quite as narrow, so there's a bit of a difference. This is actually about the, the knees sticking out. It happens quite often to most age group athletes. This is a problem with the hip flexor, it's a little bit too tight. Uh, whereas uh, Ferdinand doesn't have that issue. So talking about the transitions, for transition two, uh, you're gonna see both of the athletes, they're, they're putting socks on. So transition two, there is no penalty in terms of strategy if you take your time, because there's no, no, such, a, no such a thing as missing the pack or anything like this, like it happens on, on the first transition. So what I want you to pay attention next, Lionel Sanders is actually carrying his own water bottle on the run. You see he just flips the, the, the fanny pack there that he's, he carries and he's sipping his own drinks. So think about it, this is like, this is a, a race, they have eight stations and he still preferred to carry his own drinks. So this is very telling, you know, as an amateur athlete, I mean, if this guy at this level, he's carrying his own nutrition because he's afraid that he, that he would blow up if he's not careful with it. Just think how important that is for like your you know average age grouper. So the next stop here it's when it comes to running technique. You're gonna I'm gonna just go back a little bit so you can focus a bit more on the run technique now. So Lionel Sanders runs with a much higher cadence of about 90. So he has a very compact run run style. You're gonna see that both are like his knees and his heels are not coming up too high. It's very compact. It's almost like you know like a really fast walk. I, I like to say that. Lionel Sanders is the fastest age grouper in the world, whereas Ian Ferdino, he runs more like the gazelle, which is not something that I would suggest you to do unless you're world class um, triathlete. So just compare both styles. There you go. It's very difficult to hold this technique, what Ian Ferdino is doing, especially off the bike, especially over the long distance event. Anyway, so I, I decided to end the video with this frame. Uh, because running technique, just like the bike technique, it's something that you got to be careful of who you try to copy. Don't try to run like a runner, don't try to ride like a cyclist. The swim, there are certain things that you should try to copy from the swimmers, but other things it won't apply to you just because you, don't ha you haven't had the time to develop that skill. But anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please give the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Until next time, enjoy your training.